Today is October the 25th, 2011, and we're in Lubbock, and we're at the statue of Willie McCool, and we're speaking with his parents, Dr. and Mrs. Barry McCool of Lubbock. Ms. McCool, what is your first name? Audrey. Audrey and Barry McCool. And Dr. McCool, can you remember that day so many years ago, but yet, like yesterday, I'm sure etched in your memory? Which day in particular? The day that uh, the reentry was going to happen into the Earth's atmosphere and uh, Columbia accident occurred. Yes, I remember that day like it was yesterday. And uh, what date was that? That was um, February 1st, 2003. And Ms. McCool, where were you when you learned about the accident? Oh, we were at home watching the shuttle reentry on the TV. On their uh -huh. right. There. And where were you living at the time? We lived in Las Vegas, in Nevada, on it because I was on the the faculty at UNLV there at the time, and Barry was a graduate student and taught with us a little bit too. Is that yeah, right? right. Uh huh. And so you all were at home uh, on that day. How many were on the Columbia? Uh, Columbia had a crew of seven. Seven. And your son, Willie McCool, was the pilot, right? He was the pilot. Rick Husband was the commander. Uh, Kapla Chawa from India was one of the mission specialists. Uh, Elan Ramon was the Israeli astronaut. Dave Brown and... Um, Mike Anderson were uh, mission specialists, and uh, Laura Clark was also a uh, mission specialist on that crew. And uh, th that happened about, really, over Texas, wasn't it? It started uh, coming apart. The um, tiles and stuff like that started burning off over Hawaii. The real uh, problems uh, started uh, over in New Mexico and the shuttle actually came apart um, over uh, Hemp Hill, Texas uh, where uh, about 39 percent of the wreckage was recovered. And uh, that is almost in Louisiana, isn't it? Uh, some of the uh, shuttle remains and parts were found in Louisiana so it covered about uh -huh. it covered about uh, four states. Now that seemed like almost a cruel thing uh, that you're watching on television. Well, uh, true. We, we, you didn't see the disintegration over the television. Now, we had been outside before because we could see the arc over Las Vegas because it the, tra uh -huh. the uh, track went over Las Vegas. So we had seen it go over, and then we went back in to watch on television. In retrospect, um, I remember Barry saying that it looked a little bit strange even when it w went over, that it was really? sort of had a little bit of a tail that it, that it shouldn't have. However... Uh, then they lost contact with the shuttle and there was no TV and the contact was lost long enough that, that we knew that there was something wrong. Now tell me, when was uh, your son age-wise the earliest you realized that he had something really uh, unique and special and uh, a wonderful mission ahead in life? Well, now you're talking about a mother about her son, so I would have to say from day one, let's see, his birthday was August uh, 18th, so that would be the day. And <laughs> but what, he did well in, in what school. Year, what year was that? that in he was born? 1961. And where was he born? Uh, in Grossmont, California. And what were you all doing at that time in California? Uh, I was working as a hospital dietitian uh -huh. there, and, and Barry was in the Marines. I see. Hey. Because this was Vietnam era. Yes. And uh, so what were some of the attributes as a child growing up Willie McCool, your son, had? Uh, well, he was very focused. Um, whether it was uh, concentrating on sports, concentrating on uh, being a dungeon master for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Uh, or uh, concentrating on his sporting activities. He was extremely focused and uh, basically really good-natured about things. Did he uh, make friends easily? Oh, yeah. Uh, I can remember uh, flying in from uh, 
North Island, uh, the Naval Air Station there, and uh, landing here at uh, Reese Air Force Base. And when I came home, he would have a group of guys all spread out on the living room floor with his little brother mm -hmm. looking over his shoulder, playing Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of thing. Wonderful memories. Now, uh, where were you leaving when he first started to school, Willie? First, first grade. Let's mm -hmm. see. On a, I think we were living in Champaign, Illinois, because I went back to graduate school I there. See. There. Uh -huh. And uh, so he had a brother. Yeah, he has a younger brother. He's ten years younger than he is. Uh -huh. He's in, in the army at the moment. He's a Black Hawk. Uh, helicopter pilot and he's been to Afghanistan and Iraq but right now he's a PA student here in San Antonio as physician assistant program. Oh how wonderful. So uh, now when did you all first come to Lubbock in uh, Willie McCool's life? We came in 1977. And, and what brought you to West Texas? Well, we were coming back from Guam, and we needed to find a job. Barry was going to be on the carriers all the time and deployed most of the time, so I needed to find a job, so I came here because I had an opportunity to look for jobs. I then. See. And so what did you first do here? I was looking... At the time, I was looking to be the initial food service director for the Health Sciences Center Hospital, but they were delayed on the construction and never got, quite got it done on time. And then, uh, unfortunately, one of the faculty at Tech in the Dietetics and Nutrition Program was in a terrible car accident and very badly hurt at the time, and they needed somebody on a moment's notice to teach. And since I had the appropriate graduate degrees and the background, on a, I was drafted and then I taught for the next 20 some years. I see. And so uh, where did Willie first go to school in Lubbock? Uh, Coronado High School. Uh, he was in high school when you came. When we came, uh, we came back from Guam and made the decision that we were going to leave the uh, family in one place. I would commute as a uh, geographical bachelor uh, coming off of the aircraft carriers or coming out of uh, different training facilities at different bases rather than move the family around. He was going to Coronado High School. Kirstie, his little sister, went to uh, Smiley Wilson. And Shano, his little baby brother, uh, went to one of the elementary schools here, and I don't remember which one that was. So, uh, if Willie, Willie were here to die, uh, and I ask him, well, who were some of the people that really you looked up to who really impressed you in your life in Lubbock in this area can you remember some of those people he might have uh, <laughs> mom <laughs> well now I'm terrible at names so I can't remember names on it I do know that there were a couple of his teachers um, that he liked. Uh, he, we were also, he was very active in the youth group and the youth choir over at the First United Methodist Church and did some traveling with them, so I, there were some chaperones there that that he, he respected. I'm assuming you're talking about adults and not his good buddies that he was playing D&D &D with in there. <laughs> in there. <laughs> well, you know, uh, a peer can also uh, be very influential in a, a child in a young person's life, too. Well, probably, well, Dale, but then there was, and I can't, sorry, I can't remember his name, one of the other group who um, had applied to and was accepted to the Air Force Academy and was encouraging him said, well, you ought to apply to the Naval Academy. And so that's why he applied to the Naval Academy, because of his friend. And is, again, the connections that his friend had with the, the senatorial um, representatives from the state, because you have to be nominated you know, yes, by someone from certainly. Congress. So they helped him get that nomination from somebody who didn't even know Willie from, from Adam, really, uh -huh. on there, through one of his friends. And that's how he got into the Naval Academy and, and really started his flying uh -huh. career on there. But, it's been too long, and I'm sorry. I just don't remember names of, of his friend and, and who it all it was. And, and uh, Dale, you mentioned? Uh, that would be Dale Summers, uh -huh. who has a uh, printing company here in town and was a real good friend of uh, Willie's. They did a lot of things together. I see. Now, what were uh, some of the things he participated in? She mentioned the choir, and you mentioned uh, athletics, but I believe he was a Boy Scout, too. Yes, uh, 
He was the uh, first Boy Scout from the island of Guam to become an Eagle Scout. Is that right? And they had an Eagle Scout, uh, I believe that was here, wasn't it, that they had the Eagle Scout uh, presentation? It was on Guam? Okay. And uh, he worked here uh, a little bit with the Explorer Scouts. And uh, he was a uh, long distance runner and set a lot of records at Coronado High School. He, um, he ran a race um, in Brownfield. Um, Texas, a, I believe it was a 10K race, and beat um, badly the uh, next coming uh, President of the United States in George Bush. Really? <laughs> How interesting. Yep. Uh, the the uh, soon-to-be president made the comment about, I can't believe that kid beat me so badly. <laughs> And what about um, the senator who actually nominated him for the U.S. Naval Academy? Do you know who that was? I, after all these years, uh, I don't remember who that was at all. I was, I didn't even know he was applying to go to the Naval Academy. Really? Uh -huh. I, I was out on the ship in the Indian Ocean, and uh, the way I found out about it was um, when he was accepted to the Academy, if you had a parent that was in the Navy, the Chief of Naval Operations, CNO, would send a congratulatory uh, uh, radio message out to wherever that uh, parent was to personally congratulate them on their son or daughter being accepted to the Naval Academy. And I was out on the ship and uh, was getting ready to launch on a mission when uh, the commander of the air group uh, uh, came into our ready room and said, where's uh, Lieutenant McCool? And, I was sitting in the second row in my uh, chair and stood up and he says, um, how come you didn't tell me that I was going to get a message from Chief of Naval Operations? And I'm standing there with my mouth open. I don't know what the heck to say because, you know, as a low lieutenant, I um, had no idea what was coming. And then he read the message from CNO that was sent to me that they uh, intercepted because, you know, classified information. and. Uh, uh, the whole ready room and the squadron found out at the same time I did, so I was shocked. I see. Uh, now, your viewers, your viewers need to realize that 30-some years ago, communications weren't quite no. what they were today on there, and the deployments were very different. When they deployed on the carriers back then, they were gone for almost a year, whereas now uh -huh. it's, it's shorter on there. Uh -huh. And isn't communication wonderful today? I am. If it wasn't for communications today, I wouldn't be here today because I totally forgot about this interview. And I was sitting there, I was sitting there grading uh, doctoral students' uh, qualification exams. Uh, now tell us what you do uh, now in Lubbock. Well, I'm a faculty member at uh, Texas Tech in the um, human science department uh, and I teach uh, courses in um, hospitality management in purchasing for the hospitality industry and I teach graduate courses in um, strategic operations and strategic management and managing crisis in the hospitality industry how to deal with um, terrorist attacks uh, natural disasters hurricanes and things like that and now, are you still working? Well, I do all his work for him, number one. But uh, in, in addition, on a, uh, although I took an uh, early retirement from UNLV a, a couple of years ago, on a, and some professor emeritus at, from UNLV, uh, I'm a contractor with the National Association for the, uh, Meals on Wheels and do content writing and education training for them. And I'm also a contractor with some grant work. Um, which is why I'm running back and forth to Muleshoe all the time on cancer risk reduction, that project that we're working on here. Okay. Now, we're sitting at the memorial to uh, Willie, and what was his full name? William Cameron McCool. You know, I think it is so nice that they don't call him all the time or most of the time William Cameron McCool it's Willie always and, Willie. And, and, always Willie and you know uh, he's the boy next door he's uh, your friend right. and uh, don't you think the statue is so well constructed and uh, beautifully done it is a marvelous uh, uh, work of art that was done on a, another thing that's interesting 
uh, theoretically, the little boy beside him uh, is not from a, from another picture that that Eddie had. However, it looks just like Willie in a picture that uh, one of his aunts has of, of when he was a kid with a model airplane on it. So, it is really, a, and it's 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 a, a not a great work of art, but it's good for the kids to oh, come and see yes. with it. Uh -huh. A wonderful role model, even the statue. Yes, ma'am. It surely is. Uh, but I think that speaks volumes that it's Willie McCool. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what if you could say in a few sentences or a few words, what was your son like? Well, I think Godry could answer that one better than me. Okay. No, that's not fair. But <laughs> I'd say he was. Um, perfectionist on it he wanted things done and he done right and he would work and work at it till he did get it done correctly however to meet his standards he was a um, in a sense I put this in quotes compulsive in that he wanted things done to standard there um, he was very um, affectionate and caring for his family on it he was very family oriented um, sort of person so and he, he just was an outgoing gregarious loved people loved kids loved working with kids that kind of person and now um the uh so much of the wreckage found uh down around hempel texas almost well we'd say shreveport louisiana probably really close there by the largest uh, town and in, in deep east texas i bet that's a wooded area it is the primary uh, i was only there once for a weekend when they dedicated the uh, uh, museum to the uh, recovery process um, and dedication to uh, Columbia, which uh, NASA is supporting. And if you get a chance to go there, I highly recommend it. It is a tremendous tribute to not only the uh, crew of the Columbia, but also the whole town of Hemp Hill. Every single person in that town contributed to the uh, recovery process, and it, it uh, the industry around there is uh, pulpwood, pine forest, and you know is basically trees that are growing in swamps. So there's yeah. only one road in and one way road out, so it's really hard to find. Mm -hmm. I read something that said that uh, every person in this small town had been really affected by what had happened there and uh, they had all pitched in to help in the recovery too. I think that's that's true because it's a small town and and the the search uh, operation was massive so they used everyone that they can and, and not only were they out searching but you had searchers and now they need to come in it's like any other disaster or you got to have some food you got to have water you got to have some shelter so people were involved in providing support for the, the uh, search teams as well. And there were two lives lost even in the search yes, uh, efforts. Uh, was it a, a helicopter pilot and a Texas Forest Service employee? Right, it was um, uh, National Park Service. Um, the uh, helicopter went down um, during the uh, search and recovery process and those two gentlemen are also honored at that memorial. And they're part of the uh, Columbia recovery process. How big is that town? Probably, I uh, I don't remember exactly, I'd say probably 1,500. Uh-huh, very small then. And where is Willie buried? Um, that's classified information due to the wants of Lonnie, his uh, widow. Uh-huh. And um, we uh, don't give that information out to anyone. And. Uh, uh, the memorial when what here the one there's many uh, memorials to him and other crew members of course of Columbia but uh, when was this dedicated the one we're sitting at oh mother 2000, <laughs> 2005 2005 and uh, so I guess Willie would been if he had lived about 50 right yep now, yep that's time. right and uh, so do you uh, ever come and uh, visit this statue? Uh, about three or four times a year. Uh -huh. um, we, I bring flowers, I bring uh, like Christmas time, I'll have uh, sitting right here, I'll put some steel stakes in the ground and we'll have a, uh, a Christmas wreath for him uh, during um, Veterans Day, Memorial Day and things like that. I bring out flags and um, uh, flowers that you know red white and blue and that kind of thing mm -hmm. 
And uh, then when he went into the space program, what were your feelings? Oh, I thought it was great. It was an opportunity for him. He was very excited. He was always interested in science and wanted to learn and was always looking for a challenge in a career. So to me, it was a great opportunity for him and something that he really wanted to do. So why not go for it? Sure. And it seems like to me what you have told me, his personality, his background, his interests all led right up to that. That was a natural step. Yes. Now, to be either the pilot or the commander on the shuttles, you have to be a qualified test pilot, either a Navy or an Air Force mm -hmm. test pilot. So he was very much into flying unique aircraft, doing a lot of aircraft testing. And to him, this was just another big aircraft that one could do some testing with and, and have some adventure with. And he did have an adventure. He did. Yes. He did. And um, l uh, let me ask you about his family. He was married, right? Correct. How did he meet his wife? In high school in Guam. Oh, really? There. Uh -huh. They were childhood sweethearts got separated then eventually got back together after you know he can't be married in the academies or anything so it was not until he was in flight school or selected for flight school that they were married and uh, what about his children did he have children uh, they have three children on there his oldest son is a captain in the marines right now and he has three little children on there so we have the three of the great-grandchildren his middle son um, is an English major debate type person and and he still lives up in Anacortes where they lived and where his wife lives they went back home his youngest son is in New York City in graduate school in um, an art program he's an artist sculptor artist and in a master's program doing something in art I something I don't understand because I can't understand art at all <laughs> Well, it sounds like to me that he would be very proud of his family, and I know you are. Oh, yes, I'm sure he would have. In fact, um, uh, from what his oldest son said, he, his dad was his inspiration on going into the Marine Corps because his dad always liked the Marines and thought they were, were a great group of guys. So Sean went to the Marine Corps. Well, that's wonderful. Now, uh, what about your other children? Tell me about them. How many do you have? Uh, we have three. Um, Willie, obviously, and then Kirsty, who uh, lives in Orlando, Florida, and Sean, who is, like uh, Audrey said, he's a physician assistant um, going to school in uh, San Antonio. Um, he uh, is going to be a uh, Army chopper pilot doctor. Really? Yes. Well... One thing is that Kirsty's oldest daughter is here at Texas Tech. Oh, She's a freshman in the, the pre-nursing program here. So That's we have her. We have another medical personnel been training. That, that is special too, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, she um, was accepted at Auburn, at Florida State, at the University of Central Florida. And she chose to come here to Texas Tech to be a uh, to go through their nursing program and uh, you know live near Grandma and Grandma and be Grandpa and Grandma and be away from Mom and Dad. <laughs> and nice uh, for you uh, both and for her too. Yes. Well, you have wonderful memories, I can tell, and thank you for sharing them so graciously with us here at Channel 6. And uh, we thank you for sharing your son, who obviously was an inspiration to all who knew him and know about him with our world as well as our country and of course all of west texas we're proud of him well we're awful proud to be texans and we're awful proud to, of our son and our whole family i can see you are and we're in lubbock today and we're talking with dr and mrs barry mccool and they were the parents of willie mccool